Good day and welcome to Red Eyes Radio. Thank you for tuning in. It's good to have you with us as we continue to explore further and go deeper into the mysteries of this world and beyond. Take a good look around on our site for much more of the things that we find interesting and of importance, of course. Laird Scranton is the author of The Science of the Dogon, Decoding the African Mystery Tradition and also Sacred Symbols of the Dogon, a, uh, the key to advanced science in the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics. Uh, he's also got a new book coming out now in October called The Cosmological Origins of Myth and Symbol, from the Dogon to the Ancient Egyptian, uh, Egypt, I mean, to India, Tibet, and China. And Laird has done extensive research on the intriguing Dogon people of uh, Africa, their symbols, myths, mysterious origins, and knowledge and he joins us here today on the program to discuss some of these things. Uh, if you've never heard about the Dogon before, this is going to be a really exciting program for sure, so do stay with us. Uh, if there's any websites here that you'd like to check out, the best way or best place rather to go is either to Amazon.com or the publisher InnerTraditions.com to find more information about Laird's book, but we will have them linked up on Red Eyes Creations dot com as well. But with that, welcome to Red Eyes Radio, Laird. Uh, we're very pleased to have you with us here today. Well, thank you very much. I'm very pleased to be here. Uh, Laird, why don't you briefly just tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your background in terms of some of the things that you've been researching now for uh, quite a few uh, years here. How did you get uh, in, involved in, in the Dogon, Laird? Yes, I'm a software designer by profession. And I stumbled upon the Dogen uh, quite by accident, uh, reading for pleasure. My wife had provided me with a book called Unexplained by Jerome Clark. And each chapter of that book refers to some unexplained mystery in the world. And one of those chapters was devoted to the Dogen, who seemed to know some things about uh, astronomy that they shouldn't be able to know without uh, technological equipment like telescopes. And so I was intrigued by that fact and started to research about them. Um, I read a book by Robert Temple called The Serious Mystery and then started following his sources, which took me to anthropological studies of the Dogen and so forth. And I've been studying the Dogen and uh, related cultures for about 15 years now. I discovered that the Dogen are really... Rep really, really represent a kind of crossroads between a number of different ancient traditions. The Dogon are really a, a modern-day African tribe. They still exist. They represent about 300,000 individuals who live in Mali, uh, which is an area in northwest Africa, just below Morocco. Hmm. Uh, they live in a very inhospitable environment in a desert along a, a large escarpment of cliffs. And uh, the Dogon are a priestly tribe, and they retain a very clear sense of their own religious tradition. And the more you study it, the more you realize that the tradition touches on some very important and interesting things. Uh, for one thing, the Dogon share many things in common with, with Judaism. They wear skull caps and prayer shawls, and they circumcise their young. They celebrate a jubilee year like uh, happens in Judaism. They also practice many of the same civil traditions as uh, ancient Egypt. They observe the same calendars. They found their cities and districts in pairs called upper and lower. And their religious tradition itself shares many things in common with ancient Buddhism. I know that there's Ethiopian Jews, what is known as Beta Israel, uh, and do you think that there could be any relationship here between the Ethiopian people and, and the Dogon tribes? Uh, absolutely, I do. I think that there is a, a common, uh, a, a very ancient tradition common to both. Now, that's not to say that one necessarily um, came from the other, but that they both, um, it'd be as if you and I shared the same science teacher. And so we had many of the same references because we, at, at various points, had been taught by the same person. Uh, why don't we get into a little bit of who this science teacher might be? Because just as you mentioned briefly, there they have uh, a, a scientific knowledge, as it seems to uh, be the case. Astronomy, certain stars in our uh, you know uh, galaxy, as it were, that we can go into more detail later on here. Uh, but who do you think the, the scientists were? Where did they get their their knowledge from? Okay, well the the way to get at that question. Um, 
from a from a research standpoint is through the through comparative cosmology, which is really what I practice. It's as if you had three different copies of the same Shakespeare play, and you know Shakespearean plays were were uh, the copies we have were mostly written down in haste as someone listened to the play, and so the the different copies are sometimes have variations uh, one to the other. Uh, same thing happens here. You have what looks like um, different differing copies of a of a of an original um, source or text or tradition, um, and by comparing several different similar copies, you can extrapolate back as to what the original may have actually looked like. And so my work has been to compare the similarities and differences between the Dogen and ancient Egypt or the Dogen and Buddhism and uh, try to interpret which pieces were original and which pieces were added on in each culture. Mm -hmm. do, do you think that Dogen holds a, uh, a kind of a more of an original um teaching and more of an original formula if you will of these of of the knowledge that existed in the ancient world uh yes i think they do what in my experience what hap happens is that cultures that never never developed language uh, never developed a written language tend to hold on to their traditions better than those that did develop a written language and so the dogen appear to preserve uh a tradition that falls conceptually um just before the emergence of writing in Egypt. There are many, many um, factors that suggest that they have things in common with pre-dynastic tribes and uh, things in common with very early Egypt that make it appear that what we're looking at is um, a version of ancient Egypt that was very, very early. Um, those traditions are were originally presented mnemonically uh, I remember watching an episode of the television comedy Cheers in which one of the characters is trying to teach the other one history and he decides to do it by singing it to him in the form of a song. And everyone I know who ever saw the episode picked up all of the details of the history simply through one listen to the song. <laughs> well, the, the tra tradition of the Dogon is all laid out mnemonically the same way uh, Buddhism is originally laid out mnemonically. And so... Um, an initiate who can remember how to perform certain acts can automatically recreate uh, details of their uh, mythological or cosmological tradition. Hmm. Well, that's very interesting. Yeah. And, and that, in that sense, then, they seem to have a lot of in common with some of the uh, northern European, tra like the Celts and the Druids and what have you. The, the Oslo had a, a strong um, you know, bardic tradition, things like that, that they preserve the knowledge through, uh, through song and, and music, basically. Yes, and uh, so far, virtually every every in every region that I have looked, um, you can find evidence of the same tradition. Uh, as a matter of fact, what my third book attempts to do is to to lay out what I call the, the signature attributes of the parent tradition, and then uses those attributes to predict what we will find in a little priestly tribe in China and Tibet that I had never studied before. Hmm. Um, <laughs> And so I, I, my plan was to use that parent cosmology as a kind of a pattern to predict um, in various regions around the world what we ought to find if they were had been part of the same tradition. What does that say then uh, to you that these uh, stories and traditions are are so similar around the world? Uh, does that imply of an of a of a t 